Hello everyone, Carol Garrison with Carol's Creative Escape. How's everybody doing tonight? It is Monday, January 31st. I'm absolutely shocked that we're at the end of January. That time seemed to go so fast. Um, just, I don't know where time goes some days. I hope everybody had a good weekend. Um, you know what, I need to double check. Nope, I guess I'm doing okay. All right, I thought I was coming up a little bit blurry on my image, but I think I'm okay. All right, um, anyhow, Carol Garrison, Carol's Creative Escape, Monday, January 31st. I am very excited to be here tonight. I have another new stamp set from the January to June mini catalog that I want to share with you. If you're out there watching, give me a quick hello, send a comment, thumbs up, whatever, and... Um, we can kind of go from there. I am definitely feeling all of the spring sets that are in the catalog. I think the winter, which has not been bad by any stretch of the imagination up here is, um, I'm just ready for warmth and flower and, and, um, I guess that kind of stuff here. I am now just trying to double check my face, Facebook page. I'm a little concerned that we may have some buffering problems tonight, although my internet signal appears to be strong. I'm going to let it go unless we have a, a lot of problems. Anyhow, tonight we are going to be focusing on ladybugs. But before we do that, I do have one picture that I want to share with you because I've been really remiss. You've heard me talking about my sweet little Miss Cece, and I have not shared any pictures of her. And so I want to just share this picture and try not to have the light shining down too brightly on her. Um, this was Cece a couple weeks ago, so she has changed um, quite a bit, but this is one of my favorite pictures that we have so far of her. And um, I'm looking forward to this Saturday. I get to spend some time babysitting her while Joe's at work and um, Jose is going to be attending a wedding. So I am excited to have some CC time, and that'll come after spending the morning moving Sarah into her new apartment. So I definitely have a busy weekend in front of me, but anyhow, now you have seen. CC and you know why I fell in love with her instantly. Okay, um, yeah, like I said, it's exciting times too. Sarah's found an apartment that she's going to be moving into on Saturday. So um, we spent this weekend starting to pack stuff up. Made a run to that store in Ikea that has the awesome furniture, or the store in Bloomington, Ikea that has all that awesome furniture for us. And um, she picked up a few things for the house and so we've like I said got a couple busy days in front of us as we get ready for her move so let me go ahead and get started um, the set that I'm going to show you is this hello ladybug and it does come as a bundle so you get both the stamp set and a punch that punches out the ladybug it's on page 20 in the January to June catalog and it comes with a total of 15 stamps and in that, four of those stamps are greetings, and then the rest of them are related to the ladybug or flowers. And um, I'm going to show you how to do both styles of the ladybugs with the cards that I'm featuring today. The first card that we have is, um, or the first thing I want to show you is the stamp set. It is one of the photopolymer stamp sets, so you've got the images right on the inside, so... If you weren't <clears throat> quite as lazy as I am, you would have had everything put away. I've been kind of dashing around here <laughs> today. So I was just throwing some stuff together. And um, anyhow, you would have everything put away nice and neat. Now you can kind of tell which stamps I'm working with. Um, I'm utilizing the punch in the card that I'm going to show you. But like I said, I did do cards up that show you both, both of these um, ladybugs that you can create with this. Only one of them is designed for the punch, 
but um, I did some fussy cutting of this particular image and again it's very easy so let me show you what the images look like um, first of all here's what the big leaf looks like this one um, I love all the veining in here I did run into a couple issues and I, I left this here as a reminder for me um, where I wasn't getting an even stamp on the image and these were brand new stamps and typically I don't have issues with these but sometimes on the photopolymer there's just a little bit of a coating left over from the manufacturing process and so what I would suggest you do ink it up a couple times rub it off I like to actually rub it on my jeans um, to kind of roughen up the surface wipe it off again and then start stamping and you will get a much more solid image like I said, this was really to remind me, to remind you what you need to do with that. And I'm going to be using the stamp on the card we're doing today. So you're going to see that there is a good image. And here's what I'm talking about. I'll bring it up a little bit closer. Um, you can kind of see where it's just, it didn't fully stamp. And that's just sometimes the ink doesn't stick to it. So just make sure that when you're using your photopolymer stamps, always try to stamp it on a piece of scratch paper and if you do get kind of that rough image just make sure that you um, take time to stamp it wipe it off on your chamois kind of rub it on your your um, jeans or something like that to get a slightly rougher spot on it and then clean it off and you should be able to stamp just fine on that so anyhow that is just my tip for today but here are the images go light on the black ink again I try to show you what I learned as I'm stamping. Um, I covered the face up. Here you can see that I didn't have as much ink on there. And so you can see that cute little smile on the ladybug's face. So learn from my mistakes. But if you stamp this piece and this piece, you get this. If you stamp this plus this, you get this. And then here's the body of the ladybug, which can work with this stamped image. Um, these two items punch out. And if you stamp this one onto the red you get the spots and then the greetings there's flowers kind of a daisy this does not work in the daisy punch it's a little rounder than that one um, but um, so just be aware that it won't work with the punch but it does make great images on your paper and then we've got these cute little three flowers here this black piece is actually for the center here and then you could just make dots as a background and the greetings on here. So that covers that. Let me shove my pieces out as we go here. And what I want to do is show you um, three cards that I made plus a Valentine bag. And so to start with, I've got this card. And this is the one I'm actually going to show you how to make today. So we've got, um, can you tell I've been stamping today? I had several ink pads that I had to re-ink and apparently I've gotten pretty good at about not getting my hands too dirty when I do my lives but apparently um, when I'm re-inking pads I'm, I make a mess of my hands so I'm a happy stamper I guess my hands are dirty oh well they're clean so I'm not going to smear on anything but they are a mess tonight compared to normal anyway we've got this cute card um, I love red and black, so as soon as I saw the ladybug, the very first thing that came to mind is red and black. And this paper, if you remember, there was a, a pack in the annual catalog that, um, it's the Pattern Party pack. And in that pack, all of the back sides of the designer paper that are included in that pack are just black and white. So there's a lot of different ones that you can choose from. I like this because it wasn't too solid. And then I've just layered it with the black and red. Um, but like I said, the very first thing I thought of when I saw this ladybug is black and red. And like I said, I, I really like the look of that. So anyhow, there's card number one. This is card number two. And this is using this particular image which you would first stamp in black and then this part you would stamp in whatever color you want. It's very simple to line up the images. Um, I did not need to use my Stamparatus, although you certainly could, um, especially if you're going to be making a lot of these. And then I just kind of fussy cut these guys out because like I said, there is no 
um, punch for this particular one. And then again, just using the stamp to carry the colors through. Just kind of a bright birthday card. I thought little kids might like this one. And kind of left the inside blank on that one. And then my third card does not use the ladybugs at all, but is using this flower. And then I pulled the birthday greeting out of the wildlife wonder. So just a very simple card, um, sending birthday wishes. And on the inside, I stamped it with the three little flowers. So you don't even need to use a ladybug. You can get cute. Um, this would make a great background if you did, especially if you did second generation stamping or something like that. Um, again, blue and yellow, favorite colors of mine together. And so I just used uh, Pacific Point and Daffodil Delight on this one. So just a couple different ways that you can make cards. And then thinking out of the box, and this is with an idea from Susan Campfield. Um, I made this little bag for a Valentine's treat. It would fit a box of the Conversation Hearts, or if you just had a couple of the York Mints or something, you could put it in here. It's just two six by six pieces of paper um, that are put together. But I made the, um, she had the idea of using the punch to use on the Valentine's paper. So I carried through that idea on here. And you know, I have the googly eyes and I, I popped a couple of those on. As I'm looking at this, I wonder if you couldn't do, all right, now I have to play this one out here. I have a thought. I just need to get my scraps of paper. Okay, I'm gonna punch out. both pieces and I dropped I kind of see for Halloween a fat bat especially if you put these googly eyes and now I don't know where I threw mine but um, if you put googly eyes on here maybe if I go like this and put it over here can you kind of see a bat out of that yeah I don't know why I'm thinking bats it's Valentine's Day there you go okay so you have just a cute quick easy bag punches sometimes it's nice to go to the punches because you can get a lot done without having to run the die cuts and things like that through so um, just something else to consider different ways of using it but Oh, hi, Sherry. Yeah, you like the bad idea? Like I said, a little crazy. Not sure where my head is at, but um, I can see a bat with googly eyes. I'll try it and post it in the comments later tonight. So what I want to do now is just take a few minutes to share with you the card that we're going to make here. And I've got the pieces, and I am going to give measurements. Um, I may end up having to do a little bit of measuring because I was tweaking this as we went along. So the card base for this card is four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. And we found the first thing Carol forgot to do, so it's a successful video. We're gonna score it at five and a half. Okay, four and a quarter, real red, four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. And then we've got a piece of designer series paper and that is four by five and a quarter. So I want it to fill up my background. And then the next piece is a layer of the basic black cardstock. And this measures four and a half by three and a quarter. And then I went with one eighth inch um, borders. So now we are at three and an eighth by four and three eighths. And then of course my white layer is going to be three inches by four and a quarter inches. And then I just have a piece of scrap real red and basic black for punching out the ladybug. And I've got a piece of four by five and a quarter for the inside of my card. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, and then I have a piece of the 
full linen ribbon in real red that I'll be tying around the card. And I'm using also just some of the basic rhinestones to decorate the card. And my favorite, Winka Stella. Okay, let's get going here. I am going to start, oh, I also have, should have, a scrap of basic white, which I am going to need. Um, and that's just to stamp one of the leaves out. I am going to go ahead and start stamping my white layer. I don't need that on here. These are photopolymer stamps, so you want to make sure that you've got them on a cushion in order to um, ensure you're going to get a good stamping thing. And like I said, I'm just going to rub this black with the leaf on it on my pants and again on my chamois to make sure I'm getting a good image. I've got a piece of scrap paper that I'm going to stamp. Whoops. Stamp on. How many of you are messy stampers in terms of your workspace and what it looks like? I am um, always try to clean my space, but you get to see just a very limited area. You can kind of see my markings and I know I'm in camera if I'm working within that area. Um, if you could see <laughs> everything else outside of the square that you're able to see, it looks like a bomb went off right now. I try so hard to stay neat and it just doesn't work for you and you're messy. All right, I'm not happy with how that one's going yet, so I'm going to try one more time. That's why I like to kind of practice on a um, piece of scratch paper before I stamp on my cardstock, especially when I'm using photopolymer for the first time. I also re-inked my ink pad and that helped a lot with coverage. Okay, there we go, we're good. So I'm gonna start by inking up and I'm actually changing up my card design a little bit. I'm gonna do second generation stamping for my first leaf. Kinda of keep that out there because I like, oh shoot. Thank goodness we have two sides, but because I did stamp off, I need to re-stamp to get an even second generation here. What would we do without two sides of cardstock, huh? Okay, there's my first leaf, and then I'm going to come over here on my scrap, and I'm gonna stamp a full strength of the leaf and set that aside to dry. And then I'm gonna grab my real red ink and stamp the hello and my friend in real red. And real red, Carol, 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 where's your real red? I do actually have everything out In front of me. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have everything pulled out. I had it stacked, and the real red has disappeared because it fell on the floor. I don't even know when that happened. Do do do. Just another day with Carol, huh? Okay, so we're gonna stamp the hello. And remember, I put my sentiments, I'm sure you hear this every week from me, but I do deliberately put my sentiments onto my black crooked because then I am focusing on making sure I have the sentiment straight and not the block. And for me, that gives me straighter images when I am stamping. If you can stamp straight without that little cheat, more power to you. It just works better for me. We all have to find our little tricks to get things going. Okay. 
And then I'm just going to put this kind of right below the, my friend. And then I'll be able to arrange the other pieces around that sentiment. And I don't have to worry about whether or not I have enough room for it. Okay? Then the next thing I'm going to stamp is these butterfly, or the butterfly, the um, dots for the ladybug's wings. And I'm just going to stamp that right on my real red paper. You could also stamp this on basic white with red ink and then fill in the dots. Um, I'm kind of lazy and thought, why don't I just do it on red? And then I don't have to do that second level of stamping again. Totally up to you. All right, and my stamps are now clean, so even if I set my cardstock on them, I'm not going to ruin it. And to get the wings, I actually need to tear off that. And I am going to be doing the old extend your paper trick. And so with that, whenever you've got a piece of paper that you can't control real easily, I just take one of my half inch strips, I hang on to these. In fact, I've even got a shorter one right here. Um, I hang on to those all the time because they become my handle for extending these little bits of paper into my stamp blocks. And then I have more control just by moving this. So you can kind of see how that goes. Get it lined up where I want it. And punch. So that's just my little cheat handle, but it works really well and allows you to use up your bits and pieces of cardstock that you may have. So there are the wings and then the ladybug, the body is just here, whoops, here. So we'll get that taken care of. I should be able to get rid of this now. I think it's easier sometimes to see. And then let's, you guys know I don't mind fussy cutting and I'm hopefully convincing all of you that you can do that as well. So I'm going to just do a quick fussy cut around the leaf. And again, the trick with fussy cutting is to really make sure that you're moving your paper rather than your scissors. I mean, your scissors are moving too, but you're kind of bringing the paper to your scissors as opposed to the scissors to the paper, if that makes sense. Um, what that allows for is kind of a smoother cut. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I am a lefty. And when I was learning to cut in grade school, all we had were those stupid um, green plastic green handled scissors. And I swear they were never sharpened from the day they came out of the shop to the school. And most commonly, I believe, were used by teachers to unstick glue bottles. So they usually had a glop of stuff on them. I never really learned how to cut well. So even when I sew, I like to use a rotary cutter because then I do get straight lines when I'm cutting fabric. Um, so I don't think I have the greatest cutting skills, but I do like fussy cutting. And like I said, especially when you're moving your paper as opposed to your scissors, you can get a pretty good cut going around your images. So there, that one is already done. And I just sat and chatted with you the whole time I was doing it, so I didn't have to pay a lot of attention to what I was doing even as I was cutting it. So let's go ahead and start assembling our card. We will start by folding our cardstock along the score line. And last item number two. This one will come as no surprise is the bone folder and again I had it because I actually used it as I was making my cards tonight. There it is. It was just hiding beneath the piece of paper. 
Someday we should have a scavenger hunt on my desk. Help Carol find fill in the blank. All right. So to create the layers, the first thing I'm going to do is take my seal and I'm just going to run it across the back of my designer series paper. Isn't this pretty too? This is um, Misty Moonlight. I might have to try making a card with that. And as I've told you in the past, when you're working with the seal, it does sometimes get gummed up down here. The best way to avoid that is when you're going across, go light without a lot of pressure and then just make that check mark. And you don't need a ton of adhesive when you're using this because it is so sticky. So you can save on your adhesive a little bit because you don't require as much, but that light touch is very important. Center that on the front of your card. And then we're gonna start to assemble our layers. So it'll be real red on top of the basic black. And again, I have 1 8 inch borders here. So you just wanna center it. I find this to be the hardest layer to put on. I'm most concerned about my edges on that one for some reason. And then we'll take our basic white layer and repeat the process. And we'll stack that up. And then this whole layer, oh, you know what I forgot to do? Is my red ribbon. On my first card, I had the red ribbon going around just the basic white layer. On this card, we're going to have the red ribbon going around on all the layers. And it will be just fine. I could try peeling it off, but it never quite sits as smoothly when you do that. So... There is the ribbon going around all those layers instead of just the basic white. And then I'm going to trim off my tails a little bit. I like to use a different pair of scissors when I'm trimming ribbon just so that my paper snips don't get um, dull from handling the ribbon. All right, and then I'm going to attach this layer. And when I do put a ribbon on, I like to put just a little bit of adhesive, I didn't do my check mark, um, on the back of the ribbon just to hold it. And then this layer will be centered in here. Okay. And then to make this easy, we are going to just add, that's just from my extender piece. I'm just going to put adhesive on the back of the wings here, and we will set those on top of the ladybug's body. And then I did use dimensionals for both this leaf and the ladybug. going to kind of pop that one here and then I also put dimensionals on the ladybug and I tried to place this top one off more to the side here because it won't um, be overlapping on the leaf there too much and that way they're pretty much at the same level so then I can just stick her there and then, you all know I like to have a little bit of sparkle on my cards. And so, I'm going to take my Stella, and I'm just filling in the circles on the lady, ladybug's back with 
the Wink of Stella, and that just adds, I don't know if you can even see it or not, but it adds just a little bit of sparkle. And then we will complete this card by sticking a couple of the basic rhinestones. And when I'm putting these on, um, I groups of three tend to be what I do my rhinestones in, and I'm trying to get these in a, a straight row. And so what I find works best for splitting them up kind of evenly is to put the inside and out, the two edge ones out there. And then, you know, I have this one lone larger one. I think I'll put that on here. I'm just going to put that in the middle. It helps me to do the outside ones first, and then I can judge kind of the center where I want the rhinestone after the fact. Okay? And then to finish off this card, I'm going to go ahead and decorate the inside. And I'm going to do these this other ladybug, because I want to show you really how simple this one is to stamp as well. So let me block up a couple of these. Creating on the fly, I can change my mind partway through. I'm going to grab the Memento ink. And I'm just stamping this up. And again, be careful you don't get the face too inked up. And I'm just going to put her down in the corner. I don't know why I keep calling the ladybug a her. One would think that there's male ladybugs out there too, but maybe not. I'm not that up on my bugs. Anybody know? Let me know. I'll just make a comment on it. All right, and then we will grab the real red. And I will stamp... getting the glare from my light. I'm going to just tilt that real quick. And then I'm going to line this up. And you can see the black outline in those dots line up pretty nicely. And so I'm just going to pop that there. And voila! We've got a ladybug on the inside of the card. And now I will just... See, light touch, check mark. It works so much better than when I'm heavy handed. That's a really hard one for me to do because I tend to be heavy with my inking and heavy. I just stamp heavy. <laughs> okay, so there you go. You've got your ladybug card, that black and red paper that I really like. So here's three different sized on the embellishments and you can decide if you like the ribbon better around all three layers or just on the basic white. Quick easy card to make, a couple different variations with these fun ladybugs and even an easy Halloween or Halloween Valentine Day or if you want to get ready for Halloween you can make it a bat as well. So thank you everybody for joining me tonight. I will once again, um, well, I was going to show you my cute little CC, but, huh. Oh, here she is. I'll let you end with this cute little baby right in front of you here. And um, look forward to seeing everybody next weekend. I should have, or next week, I should have some good stories after spending Saturday moving Sarah and spending the evening with Cece. So have a great, great week, everyone. And we will see you next week. If you like the video, be sure to give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you think they might be interested in this and we will see you all next week. Bye-bye.